Hello, my name is Betty Friedan, the author of The Feminine Mystique and the founder of the modern feminist movement. The story that I am going to tell you today, will show how male biased our society is. In the majority of monotheistic religions God is portrayed as a male being. When we refer to God, we use the male pronoun, he. If the supreme being is a male, as it is in Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, and there is no female supreme being, obviously, females are inferior. This concept paved the way for male bias in our society. It took enormous effort, passion and determination of several courageous women to acquire some basic rights. We are also going to show that the fight is far from over. Here are a few examples of how oppressed women were. A young girl was considered to be a property of her father. And upon marrying, a property of her husband. A woman was a subject to corporal punishment, if she was suspected in infidelity, or if the husband simply wanted to discipline her. Sex within marriage was considered consensual by default, there was no such thing as marital rape. Woman couldn't bring a lawsuit without her husband filing it on her behalf. In the early 17th century, a woman could only attend school with her brother. By the 19th century, she could not continue her education beyond grammar school. Up until the 20th century we were not encouraged to receive an education. As a result, women were restricted in their employment opportunities to the service roles, maids, seamstresses, cooks. We as women used to conform to being subjected, but as we evolved, we learned to fight for our equality. Here is a timeline to illustrate that. In 1848 the first women's rights convention is held in Seneca Falls, New York. In 1869 Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Caddy Stanton form NWSA, the National Women's Suffrage Association. The primary goal of NWSA was to achieve voting rights for women by trying to amend the Constitution. In 1916 Margaret Sanger opens the first birth control clinic in the United States. The clinic was shut down 10 days later, and she was arrested. In 1923, she wins support through the courts and reopens it. In 1920 on August 26 the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, granting women the right to vote is signed into law by the Secretary of State Bainbridge Colby. In 1921 Margaret Sanger founds the American Birth Control League which evolves into the Planned Parenthood Federation of America in 1942. In 1960 the FDA approves first birth control pills. In 1963 my book, The Feminine Mystique gets published, becomes a bestseller and starts the modern women's rights movement. In 1963 on June 10th, Congress passes the Equal Pay Act making it illegal for employers to pay a woman less than what a man would receive for the same job. In 1966 the National Organization for Women is founded by a group of feminists, including me, Betty Friedan, and becomes the largest women's rights groups in the United States. On June 23 of 1972 Title IX of the Education Amendments bans discrimination in schools. As a result, the enrollment of women in athletic programs and professional schools increases dramatically. In 1973 in Roe v. Wade the Supreme Court establishes the woman's right to a safe and legal abortion. In 1976 the first marital rape law is enacted in Nebraska, making it illegal for a husband to rape his wife. The male bias in our society was so heavy that it continued even into modern times. All 44 United States presidents were men. 76 women and 362 men are serving in the House of Representatives. The Senate seats are currently held by 83 men and 17 women. There have only been 39 women who served in the United States Senate since its creation in 1787. One of the current events taking place in our government is something the media started to call the war on women. The Republican majority is trying to reduce women's access to abortion care. A bill, proposed in South Dakota, would make it legal to murder a doctor who performs abortions. Another bill, currently under consideration in Congress, would allow hospitals to let women die.
rather than perform an abortion necessary to save her life. GOP wants to cut nearly a billion dollars of financial aid to low-income pregnant women and single mothers. One of the biggest issues that was just voted in the Congress, is yet another Republican amendment to cut off all federal funding to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood Federation of America, founded by Margaret Sanger in 1921, is one of the most trusted providers of basic health care and family planning in the United States. We, as women, need to be politically aware in order to retain the rights, that, Susan B. Anthony, Lucy Stone, Margaret Sanger, and I, Betty Friedan, obtained. We cannot let a male biased society decide what our rights should be. We need to make our voices heard.